please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You have 0.02% of survival with what I did. Coming up this week, we are devoting our shows to mental health awareness. And today, a story of one man's attempt at ending his life. Plus, the wrestling teams had a big weekend with several wrestlers advancing to the next playoff tournament. I'll have the results in the full court press. And time is running out to sign up for financial aid as the FAFSA deadline is less than a week away. This and so much more Unleashed begins now. Bringing the news to you from Rockland, California, this is Unleashed. Good morning, Wildcats. I'm Sarah Carver. And I'm Jada Sandu. Today is Tuesday, February 23rd, and we're on an odd day schedule. Yesterday, we kicked off our week dedicated to helping teens with a mental illness. And we want to reach out and support students who are fighting suicidal thoughts. Our goal this week is to change the stigma that surrounds these two important teen issues. We explained yesterday that a stigma is a mark of disgrace that sets a person apart. It is when somebody is labeled by their illness. Negative attitudes and words like crazy, stupid, or weird create a prejudice that leads to discrimination. This week, we start the conversation about mental health and suicide prevention. This week, we are also wearing lime green. Lime green is the national color for mental health awareness. And wearing a lime green ribbon is a great way to start the conversation and end the silence. Yesterday, we started passing out the ribbons, and today we'll have more. Take a picture with the ribbon and post it with the hashtag WHS Unleashed and we'll feature you in the word. And if you're not sure what to say when someone asks you about the ribbon, here's a short video with some advice. Half of us will experience a mental health challenge in our lifetime, which is why all of us have a reason to speak up. We also need to create communities where it's safe to talk openly and honestly about mental health. This ensures that everyone with a mental health challenge has the support and acceptance they need to live a healthy and happy life. But how do you start a conversation about a topic people are uncomfortable talking about? One of the easiest ways to start a conversation is to wear a lime green ribbon. Inevitably, someone will ask what it stands for. Bingo, there's your chance for dialogue. Don't know what to say? Try a few facts to get people thinking. For instance, did you know that with support and treatment, 70 to 90 percent of people report reduced symptoms and improved quality of life? Despite this hopeful fact, research shows that many people do not reach out for support. Young people, for example, wait an average of six to eight years from the onset of symptoms to get help. Many don't seek support because they fear being labeled and worry how that will impact their ability to find work, housing, or form relationships. The most powerful way we can help is to create supportive communities where people feel safe. Real change happens when we open up about our struggles and triumphs and let others know they aren't alone. But what happens when you do feel all alone and you feel like there's no escape? Well, for one man, he gave up the fight and attempted suicide. He was done, he quit. Reporter Cindy Brandt and photographer Kayla Daughters walks the steps that he took that one day his life came crashing down. Take a look. 75 miles per hour, 25 stories high, four seconds of free fall. And on the 24th of September 2000, I was tired. I was so tired. Couldn't do it anymore. Couldn't fight it. Here I'm standing on the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco, where over 15 years ago, Kevin Hines attempted to take his life. He says that the very millisecond his hands left this rail right here, it was an instant regret. And as he jumped off the bridge and looked down this view, he learned that he had made a mistake, the greatest mistake of his life. You know, sadly, I went online, searched for ways to die by suicide. I found what they call an option. It said you die on impact. 
From the bus ride to the bridge, and even when he was steps away from his jump, Kevin realized he didn't want to die. He believed he had to. I had my first experience of my brain disease, bipolar disorder, extreme paranoia. I started having these delusions that people were trying to hurt me, trying to kill me, um, following me. Since the opening of the Golden Gate Bridge, thousands of people have jumped to their death. Kevin is a part of the 1% who have lived. So I attempted in a way that is, you know, 99% fatal, and I lived. Kevin's thoughts the day of his jump taught him that he does not have to walk through life alone. The first step is to make the call. I use a, a, an emergency plan with seven of my personal protectors that are all connected so that when I call those seven people and I get to the seventh and no one's answered, I call 1-800-273-TALK and I ask to be saved. Reporting for WCTV 19 with photographer Kayla Daughters, I'm Sydney Brandt. Although Kevin still has bipolar disorder, he has learned to cope with the symptoms of the illness. Today, he travels the world to share his story and to help the fight against mental illness and suicidal thoughts. If you or someone you know is struggling with a mental illness or has suicidal thoughts, call 1-800-273-TALK. As for today, talk about mental health and suicide prevention. And wear lime green and the ribbon to start the conversation and end the silence. This week is Scholastic Journalism Week, and the theme this year is the stories we tell. Join Whitney High School Media tomorrow at lunch in the amphitheater to share your story in just six words. And the leadership team is hosting the Spring Dr Blood Drive on Friday in the small gym. If you want to participate and help save lives, pick up a permission slip. The permission slips are located at the table outside the student store at lunch. The deadline to sign up is Thursday. The leadership team is hosting a fundraiser at Blaze Pizza on Thursday. The event is from noon to 9.30 p.m. at the Blaze Pizza on Fairway Drive. Flyers for the event are in the student store and can be downloaded on the Whitney homepage. And juniors, there is a meeting on March 1st during intervention in the small gym. The meeting will cover junior prom ticket sales, dance dress code, and event information. The meeting is mandatory for all juniors. Again, the meeting is March 1st during intervention in the small gym. Now here's Sarah with your club news. If you're a club president, there's a mandatory meeting Thursday at lunch in the theater. The leadership team will discuss club shields, club events, and the upcoming showcase night. If you have any questions, please contact Amaya Gregory in the student store. Now it's time to get the news from you in The Word. Here's social media reporter Juliana Bingham with The Word. Juliana? Hey guys, up first, check out this picture Junior Rose Roberts shared on Instagram with the hashtag WHS Unleashed. Last Saturday, the Winter Percussion Line per performed in the Northern California Association Percussion Show at Dublin High School for their second show of the season. The bass line was featured on the Marching Arts Photography Instagram page. And on Snapchat, senior Nicole Wellington sent us this snap from her anatomy lab. For the lab, the class created a model of a neuron. They featured many parts of the neuron, including the dendrite, the cell body, and the nucleus. And last week, we asked you to tweet about how you are going to change the way people view mental illness using the hashtag WHS Unleashed. Sophomore Ella Hoching is going to make a change by having everyone feel welcomed and included. She says that she is going to greet all her peers with a positive attitude. And as we mentioned earlier, we are dedicating each show to mental health awareness and suicide prevention. We are going to challenge each other to be more accepting of teens with a mental health issue. So what are you going to do to make a change and why? Use the hashtag WHS Unleashed and include a picture of yourself wearing the green ribbon if you have one. That is all we have for today. Now back to Sarah and Jada. Thanks, Juliana, and we want to feature you in Unleashed. So make sure to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat so you can be in the word. We're going to stop for a quick break and show you two PSAs that we entered this year for the Directing Change video contest. Directing Change is one of the leaders in California's mental health movement, and they have provided the facts that you've heard in today's show. Up first is a PSA from Levi Baer and Ryan Bell about suicide prevention, followed up from a PSA from Alyssa Young and Kat Brisson about mental health awareness. We'll be right back.
was diagnosed with a mental illness. Every day it feels like I'm running from something, fighting with myself. Why can't you just be normal and fit in? Nobody likes you. They say that I'm different, that I don't belong. Even when I'm with friends, I feel like I'm alone. One in five teens ages 13 through 18 experience a mental health challenge. It can get better. You are not alone. If you or someone you know is dealing with mental illness, break the stigma and call 1-800-273-TALK. I was a typical 16-year-old until I hit a rough patch in my life. I thought about taking my own life, thinking it would solve all my problems. My friends noticed it first. I would distance myself when we were together, and they finally noticed. And a simple gesture from them made a big impact on my life. Just know we're here for you. I could have missed out experiencing high school events. I went to a playoff soccer game because I didn't want my illness to weigh me down. I knew if I let it define me, I would miss out on these opportunities that only happen once. And most importantly, coming home to my loving family made me realize I'm blessed to have such great people in my life, and I wouldn't want it any other way. Taking my life is a domino effect. It doesn't only affect me, it also affects the people that are closest to me. If you're thinking about suicide, call 1-800-273-TALK. Find more info at suicideispreventable.org. Welcome back, and here's the latest news that you can find in the College and Career Center. If you are trying to decide between taking the SAT or ACT, take the Kaplan Combo Practice Test. The test is Saturday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Registration is $20. Seniors, if you are attending a college or university in the fall, the deadline to apply for financial aid is next week. You need to file a FAFSA application to see if you qualify for financial aid. The FAFSA priority deadline is March 1st. See Mrs. Rondazzo if you have any questions or if you need help with the application. The Assist to Grad Scholarship Program will kick off on March 1st. Ms. Rondazzo will have a workshop during lunch on Tuesday, March 1st to go over the application process. Sign up in the Career Center to attend the workshop. The wrestling teams battled through the playoffs on Saturday. Let's send it over to Kyle Dowd with the results in your full court press. Kyle? Good morning, sports fans. The first round of the wrestling playoffs were last weekend, and both teams participated in two different tournaments. Here are the results. The Lady Cats are sending two girls to the state tournament. Italy Overton finished in third place at Masters, and Terry Tran earned a fifth place finish. Italy and Terry are among the top wrestlers in Northern California, and this weekend they will represent Whitney at the state meet in Visalia. On the men's side, the team earned fifth place in Division II. Four of the team's six wrestlers qualified for Masters. They are Cole and Joe Ketchmar, Evan Pierce, and Christian Cornez. They will travel to Stockton this weekend with the hopes of making it to the state meet in March. And here are some of the games that you can check out today and tomorrow. The tennis team travels to Oak Ridge today to take on the Trojans. The first serve is set for 3.30. Also today, the men's volleyball team has their first home match of the season. They take on Nevada Union at 5 o'clock. And the men's basketball team is hosting a first round home playoff game tomorrow night. They are the number four seed and take on Grace Davis High School from Modesto. Tip off is set for 7 p.m. And for the first time ever, Whitney and Rockland High Schools will be playing a unified athletics basketball game on Thursday. The game tips off at 6 o'clock in the Whitney Gym. The game is part of the United Sports program that aims to unify students and athletes in competition. This game is also an official X Factor Maroon Out event. Prizes will be given out to the first 30 students at the game. And attention freshmen, sophomores, and juniors who plan to play football next year. There is a mandatory meeting today in the small gym during lunch. Attendance will be taken. Coach Doherty will discuss upcoming events and program expectations. If you have any questions, please stop by and see Coach Doherty in the weight room. Well, that is all we have for today. Now back to the Anchor Desk. Thanks, Kyle. Now here's what you can expect to see in tomorrow's show. We continue our Mental Health Awareness Week with a story about senior Chloe Parker. She will share her experience and with depression and suicidal thoughts. Now she is able to overcome her illness, to form relationships, and do the things she loves. I felt like 
I just didn't have any motivation to do anything, even stuff that I loved. Be sure to check out Patty Orozco and Brie Gill's story tomorrow. And if you want to rewatch anything you saw in today's show, head over to our website, WCTV19.com. That's all for now with the news is unleashed every day. We'll see you tomorrow.